Let's solve some moments practice questions. Okay, here we go. A student sets up a balance using a ruler and a pivot. Which statement is correct? In order to determine which statement is actually correct, well, let's find the resultant moment. So over here on the left hand side, if we imagine there's somebody who's standing up here, then applying a force downwards, the, the whole setup will turn this way into the anti-clockwise direction. Now the amount of moment is given by the force times its perpendicular distance to the pivot. So in this case this will be 5 times 40 and because the units here are given in newton centimeters I'm going to leave that as 200 newton centimeters. Now on the other hand We'll also have a moment in the opposite direction. How does that work? Well, we've got another force um, that is acting at a distance of 60 centimeters to the pivot. If somebody is standing up here, then the whole thing is going to rotate in this clockwise direction. And its moment will be given by 60 times 5, force times distance, which will be 300 newtons per or newtons centimeters. Okay, so now the resultant moment that is acting, the resultant turning force, because they're going in opposite directions, will be 300 take away 200, which is just 100. So correct answer is B. Okay, another one. A builder uses a lever to lift a rock. Explain why the effort force needed to lift the rock is less than the load force. Well, the pivot point is right over here and we can see that the effort force has a much larger distance to the pivot. So let's just write this down. And because it is further, it will actually exert a much larger turning force or much larger turning moment that will lift the rock. Another way to score that second mark is just to say that the effort mark or the effort force, sorry, not effort mark, will have to move further. Okay, on to the next one. The effort force needed to lift the rock is 100 newtons. Calculate the load force. Okay, now in order to tackle that, what we need to do is set our clockwise moments equal to the anti-clockwise moments. So, our anti-clockwise moment is created by this effort force. So, this effort force is 100 newtons. And what I'm going to write is that 100 newtons times its distance to the pivot point, which is 1.3 three meters will be equal to the other force that we're looking for, the load force, I'm just going to call that F, multiplied by its perpendicular distance to the pivot, which is just 0 0.2. Now let's just rearrange for F. So this here on the right hand, on the left hand side will be 130, will be F times 0 0.2, meaning that F will be 130 over 0 0.2. Two. And um, if we were to calculate this, we're going to get 650 newtons for the load force. Okay, next one. A boy of mass 70 kg stands on the end of a diving board at a distance of 1.8 meters from the wall. Calculate the moment of the boy standing on the dive diving board. And we're given the gravitational field strength on the Earth. Okay, well, what force is acting? Well, it is the weight, and that is acting right at the end here. And the weight is given by its mass times times gravitational field strength, which will just be 70 times, assuming the g is 10, will be 700 newtons. Okay, well, the weight is just a force and it's acting downwards. Remember, a moment is defined as the 
force times its perpendicular distance to the pivot and our pivot is just here. In this case the force is just the weight so this here will be 700 multiplied by the distance which is just 1.8 Eight. And if we put this into a calculator, we're going to get 1260 Newton meters of a moment. By the way, I've done this uh, next to the diagram for explanation purposes, but in the exam, make sure to uh, put your working out within this space. Next one, a student investigates cogs and gears. So A and C have 10 teeth while B has 20 teeth. So A is turned five times. If A is turned five times, this means that B, because it's twice as large, will turn two and a half times. But then this one here is twice as small, so it's going to turn uh, twice as fast, which is going to bring us to five yet again. Correct answer is A. Next one, a diver stands on a diving board. He weighs 400 newtons. What is the moment of the force provided by the diver around the pivot? Pretty similar to some of the previous ones. So the force is straight down. And that's equal to the weight. In this case, we're just given the weight directly in newtons. And that's going to create a moment this way. So the whole board kind of wants to turn in this direction. This here is the clockwise direction. So all we need to do to to find the moment is take the force, multiply that by the distance. So that's going to be uh, 400. Let's write this properly. 400 multiplied by 0 0.8. And this here will give me 320 Newton meters in the clockwise direction. Correct answer is B. Next one, a man lifts a load using a wheelbarrow. What is the effort needed to lift the load using the wheelbarrow? So once again, this is a question about moments. So we have two forces and uh, two respective distances to the pivot. So this force here is going to want to turn this in the clockwise direction, this one here in the anti-clockwise direction. So um, let's just set the two forces equal to one another. So the effort force, I'm just going to call that F. So F times its distance to the pivot which is just 1.2, will be given by the other force, which is 300 times its distance to the pivot, which is 0 0.4. The force F will then be 300 times 0 0.4, and then we're going to divide this by 1.2. Putting this into a calculator, we get 100 Newton's correct answer is A. Okay guys, hopefully these have been useful. Why don't you revise some electricity questions next and you can have a look at this video right over here that will really help you understand electricity better.